Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about refusing to solve a problem in, the, in an interview. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, I was in an interview and I was asked to solve a well-known NP-complete problem. Should I refuse to solve it? Do, do you want a job? Because if you refuse to try to, to at least try to solve it, then yeah, they're probably not going to hire you. I, I, well, I mean, I will give you a few takes on like the different types of mind games type of things that go on in a lot of companies. Like I've never seen this one though. I've never been in a situation where I have been presented with a coding challenge, and the goal of that coding coding challenge or that test was for me to identify that this is like a, to identify that I shouldn't do this problem or like refuse it or something like that. Uh, usually, what usually there's a goal that is either that you should solve this problem, and if you solve it, hey, then you pass, uh, or the other one, which is much more common. I mean, solving the problem is, of course, something that you should really try to do, but it's all, not always the most important thing. What's most important is that you give it the old college try or whatever, and they that they get a sensation of what coding skills you have, so that they can evaluate how good you are. And a way, there are many ways to do that. Uh, some companies they will give you something like really simple to do, just to kind of show you, all right this is the thing you're gonna do, you do it and then the exercise is more, not, not necessarily about the complexity of the problem, but rather uh, they're using a method where they're trying to engage you somehow so that they can figure out if you know how to code and if you can, it's kind of like doing a math problem, right? If, if you took, take a math, um, math test, if you just write the solution like this answer to the question, that's not very useful to the person who's going to review if you understand the problem, but if you write out your, the entire equation, that's the thing that they're looking for, that you understood the equation uh, pattern or like how to do it. It's a very similar sort of thing here, right? And so that is one way of doing it. Other ways of doing it is to give you an extraordinarily hard problem and do the same thing and see if you're cr you crack or like how far can you get in this thing. And I've also been in tests where they give you several t problems. Like they give you an easy one, a medium one, a hard one, and then you kind of just try to see how far you can get. Or they give you a, here is a algorithmic problem or like some uh, for the people who, for the companies who are actually using the algorithm based uh, problems because there's more than like uh, there's usually either companies use an algorithm type of thing or they give you a project and the, um, the w whenever they give you something like an algorithmic problem it's usually just to see if you if you know how to code that that's it when it comes to the project and like give the project uh, category of tests that you get it's more about knowing like it's it's of course about coding as well but it's more about do you know all the stack and like the tooling and like all the best practices and so forth within the product which is in my opinion more realistic because that's the thing that usually is the thing that you're going to do in uh, in the company but the algorithmic thing is very like uh, it's very popular so i'm not really sure why you would feel like uh, that an np complete problem like why would you why would you try to refuse that i mean it's not like they're asking you to solve a one of the unsolvable uh, things in computer. Like I don't know the list of all the things that are unsolvable in computer science, but I mean, and uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Having something be NP complete doesn't necessarily like, mean it's a solvable problem. You are not going to be able to uh, to make it like a scalable, efficient like uh, solution. But that's probably not what they're looking for. They're looking for if you can solve the problem. And I mean a NP per complete problem. I mean, worst case scenario, you can brute force it, uh, usually. I mean, I don't know which one you're using. I mean, a classic one is like the partitioning problem or like the best sum problem or something like that, where you have a bunch of numbers and they say, hey, you should get, can I, what, which is going to be the, if you combine a amount of th this amount of numbers, can you get a perfect, like, can you split this array in half or something like that? And the only way for you to do that effectively, or one of the ways of doing that, is to basically just create an algorithm that goes through 
all of the numbers and tries to combine them in different ways to see if there is a combination or like a, a subset or something like that that fills the criteria for whatever you're doing, right? And sure, you may not be able to get a really nice big O notation on that, but as, as I said, that's usually not the thing that they're looking for. They're looking for, can, can you solve this? Can you do it at all? So going with a naive approach here is actually, I mean, that's a, it's a perfectly fine solution. And on the off chance that they were looking for something like that is more performant or something like that. Well, then usually what happens is that they present you with this problem. And if you solve it, even if it's a naive implementation, they're going to talk to you about it. And then you can explain that, well, I was, I mean, then you can explain that this is this type of problem and then you've, you decided to go with a naive implementation because it's going to work but maybe there are better ways I mean you can use dynamic programming and like depending on what you're doing right uh, uh, to make it more effective an example would be say that you got the Fibonacci algorithm problem well uh, if for a small input, that's going to be fine. But if you're going to, if that functions, should take care of a really big input, then you would tell them something like, "Well, I would use memoization or like a dynamic program programming approach here to to short circuit the computed values to make the runtime uh, more performant." So what I want you to take away from this is that uh, yes, uh, there is nothing worse probably you can do in a interview than to refuse to solve a problem or give up uh, and this is uh, this is the way it is uh, I've been in situations where for front-end position they only asked me computer science questions where I just got algorithmic problems they didn't even check if I knew CSS nothing, no, nothing. and this is the thing that I would say most software developers will tell you about the interviewing process. It is shit for in most companies, and it's shit in most companies either because they like uh, they have a lack of competent people on the inside who do the who who actually does the hiring, or they simply want to streamline it because like they they're looking for bulk people or something like that. They're like not so picky about the software developers that they get in, right? So they usually take something that is very low cost in terms of hiring people uh, or screening them uh, with code and things like that. Uh, and I, I can't really say much more about it. This is the way it works. So what I urge you to do is to always Try, always try to solve the problem. Always, like regardless of what it is, try your best to do uh, to do well, and don't sweat it so much whether or not you solve the problem. You I mean you can of course, you can always you should always learn from. I mean if you fail a coding interview, go and look up like the problem. If it's an MP complete problem, if it's a famous one, then there's probably somebody out there on the internet that has examples that you can look at so you can figure out how to solve the problem in the future because it might come back because as I said it's popular to these famous problems they, they do come up in interviews they almost never come up in real life but in, in interviews for sure and you can learn from that but yeah failing that you just give it the best shot that you got because in many cases and I can vouch for this even if you fail to solve the problem they're still going to want to talk to you and uh, ask you, okay, wh what went wrong, what, what went well, etc., etc. And if they can hear that you have the right mindset and you reflect, well, I was trying to do this thing, but it didn't work, so I was thinking maybe I should have done that thing. In many cases, it doesn't matter if you if you solve the problem or not, because they the, the goal for them has been fulfilled. They have figured out that, hey, you actually know how to write software. Have a great day.